I tell you, people get excited about a lot of things, but we used to sing back in the day, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. And I tell you, I just welcome you here to New Covenant on this holiday weekend. We're so blessed to have the walls in. If it wasn't holiday, they might not have been here. But we're just so thankful to have them in the house. And it's so good to have you here in the house. And uh, we miss Pastor and, and uh, First Lady. Uh, but we just pray God give them rest and refresh them uh, because we have great honor and respect for our Pastor and the First Lady. Just appreciate the Lord and appreciate you being here in the house of God. I believe today is going to be the day someone's going to mark on the calendar that they're going to receive a deliverance from something you've been struggling with because we serve a God that breaks down barriers, a God that speaks to the inner heart of person and changes who we are. You see, church is the only thing that you can go to that when you leave, you can leave changed in Jesus' name. And I tell you, I appreciate the Lord. We want to, before I go into the message, we want to be sure and pray for Amber and her family lost her sister unexpectedly this week. And uh, our brother Ken Wilson is in the hospital in the Outer Banks. Uh, his sugar is acting up and he sent word that he wants a, a prayer so that he can come home. So we're going to go to the Lord right now for these two needs because how many know we're a family? And if you've got a problem, i got a problem. If you're happy, I'm rejoicing. If you get a new car, I'm not going to walk out there and say, must be nice, wish I could get. I'm going to say, hallelujah, we'll park mine and take yours. Isn't it amazing how we get jealous over the dumbest things? It can save us some gas money if we just wouldn't let jealousy be all up in us. But I tell you, we love you, and whatever family is facing at New Covenant, it affects all of us. And so would you just pray with me right now? Father, I thank you for Amber and Elizabeth and the family, God. And only you know our hearts and the pain and all of the, the whirlwind that they're in right now right now I pray that in the name of Jesus the peace speaker would just step up into the heart and soul of each family member and speak peace as only you can speak to them in the name of Jesus for it's not by might nor by power but it is by your spirit God that we receive the help that we need and father I pray for brother Ken Lord that you would be with him in the outer banks everything that he is experiencing with his sugar we take authority over it in the name of Jesus by the stripes of the Lord he is healed in Jesus name raise him up father Lord and we give you glory and honor for our brother Lord and pray that you would minister to his body in the name of Jesus and let everyone say amen I'm going to read a portion of scripture uh, from Revelations chapter number 3 and verse number 11. And the Lord began to lay this on my heart. And even last week when the message came forth, uh, uh, it was, Behold, I come quickly. And I'm telling you, I mean, I thought I'd already felt this word rolling in my spirit. I thought I was going to come unglued last week. So I've been preaching this all week long. So if I ain't got it down now, it ain't never going to get down because I tell you I just I get excited about the word of God because you know one day when I was lost he died on the cross and I know it was the blood for me when my savior reached down when he reached way down and he picked me up out of the miry clay I'm here to tell you I am excited about Jesus I don't know if you can tell or not but I want you to know he done something for me and he's still doing things for me Revelations chapter 3 and verse number 11. The Bible says, Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take your crown. I tell you I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost just swept into this place right now I don't know what the enemy's doing in your life in your family, in your finances, in your health on your job but I'm here to declare the goodness of God that 
no weapon formed against you shall prosper. But you know what? You can't just sit still. My Bible said the violent take it by force. You got to march into the enemy's camp and take back what he's tried to steal from you. Woo, somebody said, boy, Sister Joan, you're loud. You, I mean, God ain't deaf. You don't have to speak so He ain't nervous either, honey. I'm here to tell you I'm so glad that he loves us all just like we are. If you're quiet, thank God, that's more noise I can make. Oh, but you, you see, we just get so, uh, oh, you're not like me. I'm not like you. I just am what I am by the grace of God. And I love everybody like you are. If you're in God, I love you like you are. I tell you, if you're not in God, I'm going to love you to where you you need to be in God because God wants to change you he said in the word behold I come quickly I want to tell you today we are living in the last days I believe that I am going to see with my eyes the return of Jesus Christ and he said he's coming for a church without spot and without blemish a church that's waiting and watching and looking for him he's looking for somebody that's got faith he said when I come back will I find faith I I want to tell you I want the Lord to know that I love him I want him to be satisfied with my life and with my walk because he done a great thing for me brother Bill and if he done a great thing for me I need to do my best for the Lord because he wants us to give him our best you see he said behold I come quickly Woo, there was a time in, in the church realm that if we couldn't get a hold of somebody, we got afraid that the rapture happened and we got left behind. But you see, we're not saying Maranatha like we were at one time. We're living our life and going from day to day. But I'm here to tell you, don't be deceived. He's standing at the door. The Bible said no man knows the day nor the hour, not even the angels that are in heaven. But when God gives the sound, he's going to say something son go get my people and there's going to be a mass disappear it kind of sounds like a fairy tale to the world but I'm here to tell you a nightmare on Elm Street ain't going to look like nothing when the church is gone because I believe all hell will break loose on this face of this earth because we are the resistance to the evil that wants to have its flood you want to know why the devil fights you so bad? Because you are the resistance. Because you are the anointed one that stands between evil and stands up and fights. You are the power ranger. You are the superhero. Because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Why wouldn't enemies come to fight you? everybody goes why is this always happening to me because you're the anointed get up and wash your face you're a soldier in the army of the Lord he said behold I come quickly and he said hold fast New Living Translation says hold on to what you got so that no man takes your crown away from you I want to tell you my heart I, I am, pastor always says uh, I am the voice of the evangelist uh, so I'm telling you that's where I go I won't be like pastor John he can teach and do all kinds I get to teaching and before it's over I'm done preaching but I'm here to tell you the evangelist in me is rising up as I look across this land and I see the culture uh, I realize that the church has got to stand mighty in the power and the anointing of God you see, I look back. Y'all got to understand I'm old school, so you young ones will have to go uh, and probably Google this to find it. Uh, but there was an old comic uh, about uh, Atlas, Charles Atlas. Uh, you remember, he was the planet fitness of the day. Uh, he was the man who had the muscles, and he was the man who worked out and did all of these uh, uh, things to make his body at most uh, peak optimum. Uh, I mean, he had muscles upon muscles. His muscles had muscles. Uh, and I... Uh, there was a cartoon uh, and it kind of reminded me uh, of what I'm going to talk about today uh, in this cartoon there was a big bully a big muscular guy who came on the beach uh, and there was this young little skinny wimp uh, laying there on a towel with his girlfriend uh, and this big muscular guy like well, he owned the beach uh, come walking in like a bully uh, and what did he do he started kicking sand uh, in the, the little wimpy guy's uh, face and his girlfriend and he was laughing at him he 
said, hey, don't be kicking sand. And I've, he said, what you going to do about it? He knew he could mop the floor up with him in a hot second. And so he thought, you know, I don't know what. You're just up here worrying about everything because I'm in charge on this beach. But one day, the little skimpy Winnie guy had enough. Somebody say enough. And he decided he was going to start working out and lifting weights. And that's where Charles Atlas, uh, a a thing came in to get people to come to his gym. Uh, The the little guy went uh, and he was working out day after day. Instead of going to the beach, he was working out. Uh, And the big bully wondered, you know, uh, I got that little whippy guy's girlfriend uh, and I ain't seen him no more. Uh, And he said, I bet he must be afraid of me uh, and he's staying away from me. Uh, Oh, but a few months later, come on now somebody I can see him as he went down to the beach and the big bully was sitting there with the wimpy little guy's girlfriend on the towel and here comes this big muscular guy and he walks right up to the bully and he takes his girlfriend back and he takes his feet and kicks dirt in the bully's face and the bully is so afraid he doesn't even argue with him anymore and he walks off proudly Now, I want to ask you a question. What made the difference in this story? Now, you might could say, well, it's because he started working out and he started building up his muscles. And if that's your answer, you'd be about half right. Because he did do that. He did build those muscles up. And he looked like he could take care of the big bully. But I want to talk to you about uh, what the real thing was. Uh, The first thing was he got tired of being pushed around. He got tired of being stolen from. uh, And he got tired of having dirt kicked in his face. Uh, Every time he was down there lifting those weights uh, and he felt like quitting and go into the uh, Burger King and get a Whopper and go sit down at the house, uh, he got to thinking about how miserable it was to be pushed uh, around all the time. Uh, And you see, he disciplined himself uh, enough uh, that he committed himself uh, to the circumstances uh, by changing himself. You see, if you don't like what's going on in your life, Let me empower you today. You need to start lifting some weights in the Word of God and you can change your circumstance. You see, we can all sit around and complain about where we are, but until we got our mind made up, until we get tired enough of what the devil's doing, uh, we're just going to let him go. But one day, if we ever wake up, don't you know the devil's afraid if the whole church was to awake in this culture? I'm here to tell you we could take this land for Jesus but somebody's got to get tired of where we are and commit ourselves to change the circumstance by changing ourselves. oh you see we always want to hire the bodyguard we want somebody else to do the praying come on now I'm going to step on some toes I hope you wore your steel toe boots Because I'm here to tell you, we always want somebody else to do our praying for us. We want somebody else to intercede for us. We want somebody else to do the work. But I'm here to tell you, God's calling us to show up at the gospel gym. He's calling us to look into his word and start seeking his face. And then to start reading and praying and interceding to God. For you see, this culture is kicking sand in the church's face. We're living in a culture that doesn't look anything remotely to the culture that I grew up in. I grew up in a time where women were respected. I grew up in a time where ministers were respected. I grew up in a time where Christians were respected. But I'm here to tell you today, you and I see it every day. The culture is kicking sand and bullying the Christians. The Bible's authenticity is being challenged. Come on, somebody. I need need you to help me preach today if there's anybody in here that knows and sees what I'm talking about I want you to yell a big amen you see Christian principles are being wrestled to the mat what we believe what we stand for core biblical values 
issues uh, are getting shot down at our universities uh, and on social media Christianity and the gospel is under attack but I got news for you no weapon that is formed against the church shall prosper but you gotta get up off the towel you can't just lay there and let the bully kick but the church is a sleeping giant that's got to arise to the occasion and we got to take our stand for Jesus you see we don't want to make nobody mad I'm not talking about political parties today I'm not even going to name some names I could, but I'm not going to because you see what I'm dealing with today is not natural. It's not something you can see with the natural eyes. I'm dealing with the spirit that is behind what this culture is doing. It doesn't matter if it's a Democrat or a Republican. It doesn't matter if it's First Baptist or the Pentecostal Church of God, holiness by Jesus Christ. What I'm talking about is the spirit that is beneath what is going on in this culture. I'm here today to do battle with spiritual wickedness in high places. I'm here to talk to that enemy that's trying to destroy the church and biblical principles in our land. The enemy's trying to rob us. You better hold fast to what you got because the devil's taking everything away that he can and somebody better stand up and fight. Somebody better get militant and begin to fight. That's one principle I'm talking about today. And another one I'm talking about is the enemy may be trying to kick sand in your personal life. He may be affecting your health. He may be affecting your job, your marriage, your finances. He may be trying to affect your mind. Come on, anybody in here had spiritual warfare going on in your mind where depression tries to find its way into the child of God, where depression and anxiety and all of the things that the enemy tries to war against us and tell us, you know, people start getting older and they start thinking, I'm going to die alone. I'll be dead in this house for 10 days before anybody finds. And you know what? We allow something like that. The devil is a lie. Get up, body, and go outside. I'll die in the front yard. And when I die, I'm going to die speaking in tongues. I'm going to die in the Holy Ghost because pray in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. I'm here to tell you don't worry about death. It's pretty impressive. One out of one dies. I don't know any statistic that's any better than that. Oh, but I'm here to tell you something. When you know the Lord, oh, swing low, sweet chariot coming forward to carry me home because there ain't no grave gonna hold my body down. You want to know why I get excited? This ain't only a good thing while I'm living. It's good while I'm dying. It's good into the next life after this life. You see, the enemy will will attack your family. How many of you are tired of seeing him attacking your children? Come on, if somebody wants to get to you, they go to your kids. Why do you think the devil fights us so much? He's trying to get after God. And who are we? We're God's kids. But I got news for you. Daddy's on the way. It may look like Sunday night, Friday night, but Sunday's on the way. I'm here to tell you the devil may be wilding a a warfare against you, but weeping only lasts for a night, but joy comes in the morning. I said, Lord, I'm going to try to preach this calm because it's just as powerful calm as it is loud. That's a lie. I'm here to tell you I can't do it. I hope I don't make, get on your last nerves yelling, but I'm here to tell you something. I get a, a feeling everything's going to be all right. I just get a little beside myself. Oh, one day I'm going to get beside myself when I get beside of the king that day. I'm going to have the time of my life when the time of my life is over. I'm here to tell you I'm looking for the upper taker and not the undertaker. But ever what taxi he sends, I got my ticket. I'm ready to go. Now I want to tell you, you might have some things going on in your home and you don't know what to do. But I want you to know nothing will change in your circumstances until you change. You know, that's not easy. Come, how many know going to the gym, if going to the gym was easy, I'd have done been down there and you wouldn't have been looking at all this. But it ain't, it ain't easy. It takes some discipline. It takes some work. So you know what? 
I got a bulge here and a bulge there, but I wear these jackets because I'm five sizes smaller. <laughs> Said no one ever. But you know what? If, if you pay the price, you can have what it, you need to go after. If your kids are acting the fool, there's a price to be paid. And it's called falling on your face before God. How many know you can't tell your grown children what to do? Oh, 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 oh. I want to look sometimes and go, what are you doing? But I just could see how that could, I play things out to the end. I'm like, that will not end well. You know, you can't tell. I, I told somebody the other night when they were trying to control somebody. I said, you know what? I have learned one lesson in life. One. This one thing I know. There ain't but one place I can control. And that's right here. But let me tell you something. They always had that saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. But I believe you can give them a salt tab tablet and make them so thirsty they beg you for a drink. You got to think outside the box. And you see, when we get down on our face before God and say, God, here's my finances, here's my marriage, here's my children, here's my job, here's this thorn in the flesh. Here's this depression that I'm dealing with. I'm here to tell you, you put your hand, your stuff in the hand of one who knows how to speak to the troubled waters of your soul, who knows how to say, peace be still in the calm, and even the winds and the waves have to obey him. Because I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. He'll split the sea so you can walk right through it. But you got to be militant. You can't be on the couch and you're lazy boy. Lord, just work this all out. You've got to hear the Lord so you know when to speak and when not to. I mean, that's a big, I just said a little short sentence. That's a big mouthful. Because some people speak when they need to be quiet. A good place to have more amens than that. Some of you don't have people say something to you and you thought, you know what, I don't think they should have said that. You cannot change your circumstances until you change you. Because you know what, it, when you give somebody the power to make you mad, that's too much power. And when you do that, you have to go back and apologize. How many likes to eat humble pie? It ain't real good when you got to go back, when you done act a fool. You know that, I love that little Tyler uh, Perry found this woman and she was singing. She was on the praise team. And she, said, she went up in there and she didn't like the way things went on the praise team. And she come down with her tambourine and she said, come on Myrtle, we're going. She said, where are you going? She said, we're going home. She said, why are you going home? She goes, I ain't staying here. She said, I'm telling you right now, they done let the devil use them. And she took her tambourine and started stomping it and playing it. Said, you done let the devil use you. And now he's using me too. How many know that's what happens when you get yourself caught up in a mess, when you jump into the situation. But if you hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle, Satan, your kingdom's coming down. And I tell you, when you get that in your spirit and you know where when you're supposed to move, when you're supposed to speak, and what you're supposed to do, everything will be all right. You see, you get that victim mentality. It always happens to me. We learn this at a young age. Everybody's always picking on me, Mama. They always after me. They always do. Oh, we go to the grocery store, and every line goes zip, 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 and ours is standing still. And what do we say? It always happens to me. Never fails. If something's going to go wrong, it's going to stop saying that. Because I'm here to tell you there's power of death and life in your tongue. And you see, you're turning yourself into a victim. But instead, I like to have victor mentality. I'm standing in line and think, who am I supposed to be talking to here? And you know, if you can't think of nothing to say, and you can sing. Now, if you can't sing, this ain't for you. If you can sing, just start singing. One time when I was in the lowest part of my life, 
My dad was in the hospital and he was dying with cancer. And the doctor said there's not anything else that we can do for him. And the only place he could eat was Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I ran into the store while they were getting out of the car, a 15-minute process, to walk across that parking lot. And I was standing in line and tears was running down my face. And in my heart I was saying, God, what am I going to do? My daddy's dying with cancer and I don't, I'm a daughter that he fixed everything for me and I can't seem to fix this and I don't even know where to go from here where do I go from here and this black man was standing in front of me in Kentucky Fried Chicken right and he said we've come this far by faith leaning on the Lord trusting in his holy word he's never failed us yet no can't turn around we've come this far by faith and and when he started singing that, all my fears calmed. Everything settled. If I ever felt like the Lord sang me a song, he sung me a song in Kentucky Fried Chicken because somebody wasn't afraid when they felt the unction come on them to let it out. He wasn't afraid to turn around and say, how are you doing? How's your day going? Come on, you need to look for those opportunities. You're a child of God. You're an ambassador from another world. You gotta be about the father's business you're being detained for a reason you better figure out what your orders are and change it don't be a victim be a victor but the trouble is we always looking down everything bad happens to me everything bad I'm telling you I'm not going to have that mentality I refuse to let the devil steal my joy at Thanksgiving. I refuse to let the devil take away from me because some things are going on in your life. Come on, you can just say, you know, I'm just down when I'm down and out and sing the blues but I got news for you God's looking for somebody that says no matter what the weapon is I know that we win we win but we gotta stand on the fact I need Lily in here she can sing a verse of that for me I'm here to tell you we win when we stand on the gospel what are you gonna do about your life I got news for you ain't nobody else gonna fix it I've been on this journey for years and ain't nobody fixed my life. Come on. The life is in the power of me with the Lord working through me. I can do nothing through Christ, but I can do all things through Christ. And how many know, sometimes you go, yeah, but I did it and it didn't work out. How you know it didn't work out? Because the story didn't go the way you want the story to go? Come on. We get this, oh, God, God, I want you to go over here and I want you to speak to this person. And then God, we just all up in God's business trying to tell him how he's going to fix it for us. But I'm here to say, Lord, everywhere, everyone, ever how, I want to walk in your will. Whatever you do, that's where I'm going to walk. And you know what? I'm going to be happy in it. And some people are going, I'm so happy. I'm just happy. No, that's not the kind of happiness I'm talking about. When you put, you don't just say it, you live it. You get yourself in the word of God, put on the gospel music, and you go with it. I had an aunt that all she ever did was sing sad songs. Two little children, a boy and a girl, sat by an old church house door. And I mean, little, it'll make you boo-hoo to hear the whole song. But I'm here to tell you something. She always lived a sad life. But I had my mind made up. I wanted to be the party and people want to come where the party is. Why nobody ever wants to come around me? Maybe because we're griping all the time. Well, that's scriptural, right? And whatever state I am, therewith I've learned to be content. And know that God's going to make a way. It may not be right today, but tomorrow's coming. I'm telling you, we serve a God who is touched with the feeling of our infirmities. And the only person that's got the power to change your life is you. It's a circumstance that you're in. I choose life. Choose you this day. Blessing or cursing. I choose blessing. I choose life. Luke 10, 19 says, Behold, I give unto you power. Power. And some Christians are like, I don't know what's going to happen glory to God you need to read Luke chapter 10 and verse 19 because he said behold I give unto you power 
power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm you but you see we don't really believe that oh lord doctor said I got cancer I'm going to die the devil is a lie yeah of course we're going to die one day but not today devil I'm here to tell you I got my foot on a rock and my mind's made up it will not come nigh my dwelling and if it does I'm still going to praise him I'm here to tell you when you got your mind made up it don't matter what he throws at you you got an underhand swing, an overhand. You can hit that ball right back to the enemy because he said, I give you power to tread upon scorpions and serpents and over all the power of the enemy. This verse tells us that we have something. We have to go after it and we have to engage in the battle in the enemy. You just talk to these people, Mona, Pam Keller, Pastor, some of you others, uh, Mary and those that have dealt with cancer or something, uh, uh, my sister Diana over here, I'm telling you, they can't just go, well, I guess I'm going to die now. Bring all the children in. I'm going to tell them goodbye. I say, like, you think I'm leaving here? You guys need more help. I ain't going nowhere. I might be battle-scarred and war-torn, but I'm still walking. I put on some bigger heels today and couldn't wear them, but one day I'm going to wear them. I'm here to tell you something. What does it take to make you quit? What does it take to make you quit? Well, if I lose my job, I'm going to quit the Lord. Come on, isn't that what people do? If God don't answer this prayer, then I'm going to quit. The devil said, oh, that's all it takes is this one prayer. I'm going to block it up every way I can. I'm here to tell you, I've told him many times, I ain't quitting. I know you're trying to make me quit. I know who you are. I know what you're doing. But let me tell you who I am. And let me tell you who I serve. And I will not be denied. I will not quit. Dig your heels in. The Come on, we know how to do it. Somebody tries to make us do something we don't want to do. We go, well, bless God, I ain't doing that. Don't act like we can't get militant with the devil. We need to start getting mad at the devil instead of people. Because you know what? There's a spirit behind them. Remember when Jesus was, Peter was talking and he said, I'm going to be crucified. G Peter said, not so, Lord. It ain't going to happen. I won't never deny you. I'm going to stand with you till the day I die. And the Lord looked at him uh, and said, get behind me, Satan. Woo! If Pastor John come up and told you that, that's all it'd take to make some of you quit. That pastor called me the devil. But come on, he wasn't speaking to Peter, but he was speaking to that spirit that was behind Peter. And he said, you don't even know. Remember the one guy that said, give me this power that I can go around and lay hands on people that I might profit and I can do. And Peter turned around and looked at him and said, you're in the gall of bitterness. He said, you don't even know what you're asking for. You're going to be cursed. I'm here to tell you something. There is a spirit that is behind people. There is a spirit behind our culture today. And the church has got to discern spiritually what's going on and take a authority over it we got to walk back to the enemy's camp and take back what he stole from us Lord I might get his throat off of Facebook well glory to God we can get the message out I'll go to the street and get them in here I want to tell you something we've got to be militant and realize that God's calling the church to wake up because you're going to die in defeat if you don't wake up, you see, we've got something and we've got to go with it. He never promised you a life without battles, but he promised you the victory if you fight. He didn't tell the children of Israel, now y'all stay here, guys. I'm going to go out there and fight the battle. And when it's all done, I'll come back and tell you how the war went. No, they had to put their duds on and they had to go out and fight. You have to decide that you're going to be a man or a woman of God that you were destined to be. You have to learn to discipline your spiritual life to the word of God and to fasting and to prayer if you want to see things happen you don't like your circumstances that you're dealing with in life then I asked you the question what you going to do about it you don't like what the devil's doing in your finances then I'm going to ask you a question what are you going to do about it you're the CEO of your home you got to run this company you got to run this business you got to run this family you got to decide as the man of the house I will 
will not be denied. You've got to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve God. You don't like what the devil's doing in your family? Then I'm asking you a question. What you going to do about it? Woo! I'm telling you all the time. I walk through my children's house and they don't even know it. I'm going in the name of Jesus. I pray over this couch. I pray over this kitchen. I pray. I look at Aiden and go, you're a man of God. You're going to serve God. You're gonna, you are blessed and highly favored of God. And I was talking to him last night, and he was going, and I'm like, I don't remember Josh and Ryan doing that. I told Mary, he's trying to talk to me. She goes, oh, no, he's preaching. I'm here to tell you something. Look into your children's face. Don't go, you're an idiot. You're stupid. Because you know what? They'll start acting like what you think of them. But you start telling them you're smart. You're a king's kid. You belong to God. You can make it. You can overcome. You're great. You're a, you can be great. Whoever you want to be, you can be it in God. We need to start speaking and change some things in our life. You see, there was a man in the Bible. I don't even know what time it is. That's where I'm going to get in trouble. Um, there was a man in the Bible, and he was bedfast and bedridden. He was laying on a cot, and he couldn't do much about a situation. But he had four friends, and I preached a message one time about faith, hope, and love. That's who, there was three people there that was on either side. I kept taking them, one person trying to help him, two tried to help him, three tried to help him. But it took four people to lift that man. And they were going to go in, but when they got to the door, they couldn't get in for the press. There was too many people in the door. They could have come back and said, man, I wish things could have been different for you. But we tried. Sorry, Charlie. We just couldn't help you. I hate that. We're going to have to leave. But no, they looked at him and said, you know what? We can't get in the door. We can't get in the window. But I put a roof on one time, and I know how to take it off. And they climbed. I'm talking about radical. They climbed up on the roof. Pastor John said in his studies that this was the house that Jesus was staying in. Now, that's pretty sad when you're going to tear Jesus' roof off. But I'm here to tell you, these people loved people more than they loved things and they got up on that roof and they tore the roof off and they let him down I'm telling you this took some ingenuity and some work but they let him down and when he did he was made whole and healed because somebody said we got the power to get him to Jesus there was a woman whose daughter was possessed with the devil and she heard about Jesus and she said, this is a Gentile woman. She said, I'm going to take my daughter to Jesus because we need a miracle in the house. Well, I hope you get ready because I'm fixing to preach to you now. She got to that place. And when she did, the disciples said, Lord, send her away because she cries after us. She wasn't crying after y'all. She wanted Jesus. But sometimes we get a little too high and mighty about who we are and we think, oh, bless God, the masses want to get through to me. No, they're trying to get to Jesus. Church ain't about us. It's about Him. It's about the Lord Jesus Christ and bringing the lost and the hurting and the dying and the broken. This is a spiritual hospital. Sometimes it gets messy in a hospital. Sometimes uh, people have issues uh, and thank God He is an issue God who knows how to speak to the situations in your life she gets the reluctant disciples and then Jesus ignores her come on some people will say oh, I declare I ain't never going back to that church you know what we've raised a culture of people that's got to have trophies and pets on the back and the churches fell right in line with seeker friendly churches we don't want to hurt nobody's feelings and drive them away but it's like having a sore on your arm and you go to the doctor and say, this sore is here and it won't heal. And the doctor looks at it and goes, that's cancer. But if I tell them that's cancer, that's going to ruin their day. It'll ruin their life. Why, they won't be able to go on vacation like they, they're going to have to go to chemotherapy and ready. I don't want to make them feel bad, so I'm going to tell them, it's okay. You can do that. Just go on out there, put a little Band-Aid on it. And then after a few months, when their arm rots off, they come back to the doctor and he goes, well, I didn't want to tell you that it was cancer because I knew it was going to ruin your day. 
The church is so afraid we're going to ruin people's life. We're letting people die and go to hell. You know what the truth is? we got to love the sinner. We've got to act like we're trying to save them from a bridge and plunging off into the water. I think God is raising up a generation. You see, the generation that's under me, you're the generation that God is calling into order. You see, back in my day, we were so hard on people that we slam dunked them. You turn and you're going to burn. You're going to hell. I mean, we were just like rough on them. And then we got another generation that said, we ain't going to act like that. Watch me run. This is running. We're going to run to the other side, and then we're going to say, it don't matter if you live together. Don't matter if you're, if you're in a homosexual lifestyle. Doesn't matter if you're doing drugs. or what. You know, come on, we keep moving the marker. What's okay? You, you watch it. You see if the Lord tarries where things will be when your children and grandchildren grow up and you're going to realize this preacher's telling you the truth today because the marker keeps getting moved and what was, oh, we better hold fast to what we got. What we got is the word of God and it never changes. But it's the same yesterday, today, and forever. But I believe that the generation that's here that skipped our generation because we kept trying to get it to the middle of the road and it was just too much for them. They couldn't take it. And so the next generation jumped over and ran. But I believe God's calling that generation back to the middle of the road that's going to say, I love you with the love of the Lord. But honey, you got cancer on your arm. But Jesus wants to deliver you and heal you and set you free. We got to love them like it was us. See, we don't look down on them and go, stay right here, we'll get the sin indulgence committee and they're going to come and they're going to extract the sin from out of your life. You wicked sin, let me take my gloves off. Come on. We need to get down and let people know, man, you're in a mess, but I love you and God wants to get you out of it. You see, we've played into the hands of things because we have friends and loved ones that fit these descriptions that I named. So the enemy uses that to go, they're so nice. Bob Harrington preached many years ago, a lot of good people are going to die and go to hell. Because it doesn't matter how good you are, it matters how saving he is. We need the saving grace of God to deliver. Do you know that a lot of times that people that stay in the homosexual lifestyle end up committing suicide? Even after they have the sex change, they realize, you know, there's still something missing. It's Jesus. That's what you're missing. You're missing the Lord. You're trying to find love in all the wrong places. You're lo- but the church has got to stand up and we got to be the church and let them know God loves you. We don't care. I got in so much trouble at the church where I pastored when I said homosexuals are welcome in here. I had three people meet me after church and go, uh-uh. I'm like, uh-huh. They're welcome here. You know what? I'm welcome here. Jesus welcomed you here. Whatever your mess is, it ain't no different than somebody else's mess. A mess is a mess is a mess but I'm here to tell you God knows how to clean up the mess he knows how to come in and fix the water damage he knows how to restore what the enemy tried to steal away from you you see this woman went to Jesus and the disciples they tried to turn her away and Jesus ignored her and then when Jesus did speak to her he said it's not bread it's not meat for us to give the children's bread to the dogs Come on, some people have said, I tried God and I'm mad at God. I don't even want to do anything with God. You know what? That's your only hope. If there was only one cancer doctor in the world, I don't care how great or bad his personality was. If he had a good track record track record of healing people, I'd march right up in there and say, tell me what you, I don't care what you say about me. Tell me I need to lose weight. Tell me everything. I'll take it. I can take it. Just tell me what I need to know because I got a need. And you see, that's where this woman was. And she looked at him and instead of saying, well, I never. She said, even the dogs. Get the crumbs from the master's table. You see what the difference is in a divine appointment? Somebody who really needs a miracle. Somebody who's really tired of the enemy kicking sand in their face. She looked over and thought about her feelings and then looked at her daughter and said, I'm here for one purpose. You see, we could stay in churches a lot longer if we wouldn't have our feelings on our shoulder. Oh, 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 oh. Mm, we need to let that marinate. 
Come on, somebody can just look at us funny, and all maybe they got a migraine, headache, or gas, and we just they making a face, and we think, oh my God, what they looking at me like that for? Come on, get your feelings off your shoulders. Realize we're in the last days. We got to grab each other's hand and help each other make it home. Because behold, I come quickly, and you need to hold fast to what you have, because no man will take your crown. Do you know this world will take the church's crown if we let them? We're coming into an era that is like one I've never seen before. And I don't want to go where this train's headed. So I'm making a call to the church that we got to rise up. She needed a change, and she said, I don't care. My feelings are not an issue. I need a change because I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Do you know if ISIS come over here, this whole world would go, Aah. we got a few militant people who would stand back and say, not on my watch, and pull out their stuff and get their ammo on, get their stuff together, and go after the enemy. And, and, you know, we'd be hiding behind some of them people. You know what? We need to get on the front line. We need to say, devil, you're not going to have my children. You're not going to take my finances. You're not going to destroy my health because I'm going to come into the enemy's camp and take back what the enemy stole from me because I'm no longer a slave to fear. I'm walking off the the enemy's camp and I'm going to go into a place that God's designed for me this week one of our candidates that are running for president said so many and I quote so many things in scripture that are inconsistent internally and you've got to decide what to make sense of Christians do you not think that if some people get into office we're going to be in trouble because of how Jesus spoke that is in his experience I quote there's simply no way that a literal understanding of Scripture can fit into the Bible that I find in my hands. And Sister Danita wrote in there what I spoke out loud. She said, that's because he's trying to understand the word with his literal understanding. I'm here to tell you the things of God are spiritually discerned. And if you read things in the natural, you'll never get it. But when the Spirit of God gets on you, you will know the word and know the truth. And the truth will set you free. I'm here to tell you we're in perilous times. Second Timothy 4, and I'm winding it down. Preach the word of God. Be prepared. Whether the time is favorable or not patiently correct rebuke and encourage your people with good teaching for a time is coming when people will no longer listen to sound and wholesome teaching come on it sounds like I'm describing America they will follow their own desires and look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear they will reject the truth and chase after miss but you should keep a clear mind in every situation don't be afraid of suffering for the Lord work at telling others the good news and fully carrying out the ministry that God has given you you see my intent for this message is to let you know that you're more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus who loves you I want you to recognize that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world I want you to get mad at the devil that's kicking sand into your family, your ministry, your finances, your life. I want you to rise up on the inside and say enough is enough. I want you to realize you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You are seated with him in heavenly places and in the mind of God you are a winner. You're not a loser but you're a winner and you have the advantage. As they came, comes up, I want us to sing that song I'm no longer a slave to fear you see you have the word of God you have the power of the Holy Ghost I want you to look at your neighbor and tell them I'm anointed I want you to look at tell them I'm anointed like you mean it I'm anointed come on if the enemy comes into your house you're not going to say will you please leave my house 